In this video, we are answering your questions about the next Pro Display XDR, what M2 will look like in terms of cores, and much, much more. So let's get into your questions. And by the way, yes, this is a haircut. No, this is not a haircut because of USB-C. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumors? Subscribe and ring the bell. Let's start off with this question from Thomas Ravenstein. I gave answers. I read an interesting article that said that Apple is already working in the background on the future replacement for the iPhone slash smartphone. AR technology is supposed to play a big role in this. Apple glasses came to mind, and I wonder if there will be anything new on that. Will we see a teaser for it this year? I think there's a decent chance that we're actually going to see something about Apple's AR VR technology at WWDC. It is the place where they release all of the new software stuff. And software is very much going to have to come first for something like this, so we're going to need to have developers ready with apps to go on to this when it finally arrives. Now, given how difficult it seems to be right now to get anything produced in China or in those kind of areas because of COVID and lockdowns that are happening, all that kind of stuff, I think there are going to be delays to this. However, I do think we're going to see a developer transition kit, very much like what we saw for the Apple Silicon transition, where developers will get some kind of hardware that doesn't look exactly like what they'll be uh, selling in the end, although the Mac Mini looked very similar, wrong colour, apart from that it was pretty close, but I think we might see something with slightly less powerful hardware than the final version, maybe slightly lower resolution, but Apple letting developers know behind the scenes that they will need to have these uh, scalable graphics that are able to go up to the 8K per eye that we've been hearing about. Now that's going to be a lot of power that's required to drive those, and this might be part of the reason that we're expecting to see better graphics performance in the M2 as well. At the time we were told that it would be an M1 level chip. Now M2 is basically the continuation of the M1 level. So that's probably what will power something like this. But what we're hearing about is obviously VR glasses, like more of a goggle type situation, a headset. This is not the Apple Glass that we heard about a few years ago when we were looking at individual kind of a regular pair of glasses that would be projecting onto them in a Google Glass style. We're talking more about a headset that you wear for full immersion, but potentially with camera arrays on the outside so that it can kind of mix reality for you. What do I think we'll see at WWDC? I think we are most likely to see the developer transition kit in terms of software. I think there will be stuff that can be tested just using iPhones that have LiDAR and that kind of thing built in for those 3D environments. But I also think we might see some kind of hardware whether it's open and uh, announced at WWDC or very, very heavily NDA'd behind the scenes and given to select developers, as Apple has done in the past, where the guys over at Pixar got to use the 2013 Mac Pros way before release, but in disguised uh, physical formats. So I think that's more than likely what we're going to be seeing. Brandon L asks, IK Vances, can you tell what devices we watch your videos on and what resolutions we watch at? Yeah, I have got some information on that and it's quite interesting. Uh, as you would probably expect, iOS makes up the majority of this at 38%. That's the kind of the biggest chunk. I know that's not a majority. It has to be over 50% for a majority. However, 38% on uh, iOS and 20.9% on macOS. Now, I think iOS probably also includes iPads and things like that because that's quite often used for content consumption. Then we drop down to 14% of people watching my channel on Windows. Sorry to hear that guys, Your uh, my thoughts are with you. 12.9% on Android, that's actually more confusing than the Windows thing. I know some people like have a f an iPhone and would like to move to macOS but then probably have an iPhone. I, I don't know what the Android people are doing. And 5.7% of people who actually watch are watching on tvOS, so they're probably sitting in their lounge having a lovely cup of tea or preferably coffee while they watch. Evan Rogers asks, I gave answers with Apple recently officially depreciating macOS server. Do you think a new server edition of the Mac Pro will be on the cards for Apple? The Skywalker Sounds server setup seems like one good enterprise use case. I understand where you're coming from with this. I have a feeling, though, that Apple probably it's not a big enough part of the market for them to worry about that much. I think there is custom software that can be written for places like Skywalker Sound that need to be able to um, run multiple Macs across a network and be able to access them remotely. I feel like for, for most people, Mac OS server was more about uh, being able to use files from across a network. I don't think that's something that's too difficult these days with uh, how easy it is to set up a NAS and that sort of stuff. But yeah, I feel like if anything, they'll just roll some of those features into Mac OS itself and we won't get like a, a specific 
piece of hardware for it and maybe not even specific software. I think it might just become part of the feature set. I would love it if, uh, as we've talked about in the past on this channel, Apple built some sort of mesh computing uh, into macOS so that if you were to have these uh, Mac Mini SEs that we've discussed in the past around your house, like attached to different TVs so that you can, in a pinch, use those as a computer. You know, you can do some word processing if you just connect a Bluetooth keyboard. I would love it if you could, uh, if you have computing heavy tasks on one system and the others are out of use or they're in a sleep state, you could use like a, a power nap type functionality to wake those up across the network and just distribute some of your computing tasks. That just feels like it would be a really uh, unique thing for Apple to be able to do kind of without any kind of management of it, just being able to do it remotely from your Mac. Akash Sada asks, uh, IKF answers, buy the M1 Air now or wait for the new Air? And this is a really tricky question because there are um, MacBook Airs out there right now that you can get for very, very good pricing. If you go to the Mac um, refurb store, you'll be able to get a really good deal on a MacBook Air with M1. For goodness sake, don't go to the uh, the Intel ones. Ignore those. Those, uh, those are dead to you now. Don't touch those with a, a, a long pole. Um, but you can also go to Amazon if you don't want to go for something that's refurbished, although refurbished from Apple basically means brand new to all intents and purposes. There may be the very smallest marks, but typically they replace cases, they replace displays, they replace batteries. So it, there's almost no differentiation between new and refurbished and your warranty is the same. But if you do want to go to Amazon, you can get one brand new for about the same kind of discount. I think 887 is what I saw last versus um, 999 from Apple, and I think you'd be looking at around about 850 if you went to the Reverb store. Um, if you do want to go the Amazon route, I'll leave you a uh, an affiliate link that you can help support the channel and pick up your Mac MacBook Air. Uh, in terms of waiting for the new one, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference for the vast majority of people that would use a MacBook Air, because the vast majority of those people not buying it for gaming or heavy duty video editing. You are going to get a little bit more performance and you'll probably get another year of support but it will also probably be more expensive at around about eleven ninety nine dollars is what we're expecting because it's probably going to have that nicer display too. Randomness R asks, I gave answers. Hi Dave, did you hear about the rumours for the 14 Pro Max getting a 5,000 milliamp hour battery? I think that would be insane. Have the battery capacities been leaked and do you think the 500 5,000 milliamp hour battery is possible? How long can we expect the phone to last if it gets that, considering the A16 chip will be more efficient? I have no confidence that there will be a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in any of these. I think the largest ones now are around about 2,500 milliamp hours. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think 2,500, 2,600, somewhere around that. Maybe 2,800 at a push. Um, but I don't think we'll be seeing batteries that much bigger unless Apple has somehow found a denser, a more dense one of those words, um, way of uh, building batteries. I don't think it's going to happen, but let me know in the comments if you do think it will do. If it did, uh, I mean, the iPhone 13 is pretty efficient right now. You can get very much a full day out of it. You'd be looking at nearly two. I just don't see it happening. Again, Randomness R asks, IK answers, when will Apple innovate and add sensors to the Apple Watch Band? There's a company that just added a camera to the Apple Watch Band, which lets you FaceTime and stuff. Apple could even add sensors or batteries to the band to make it a smart band that could extend the watch battery's life. What is the possibility of that? Again, I'm going to say I don't expect that Apple will be adding sensors or batteries or anything else extended to the Apple Watch bands. I don't think it'll happen. Certainly don't think they should put a camera in there. And I'd be very surprised if this uh, this watch band can actually let you do FaceTime. I don't think that's going to be the case. Although, if I'm wrong, drop me a link in the comments because I'd love to have a look at it. But I don't think that the Apple Watch itself is capable software-wise of running FaceTime right now. So I don't think that that's the case. Um, I wouldn't want a camera in my watch band because it's going to be pointing up my nose. Randomness R asks, IK answers, what colours can we expect from the AirPods Max 2 and any chance it gets the new chip that's coming in the AirPods Pro 2? We don't know what chip is going to come in the AirPods Pro 2. Uh, I'm not even sure if there's any requirement for a new chip. The only thing that I think needs to be added really, and I genuinely think this does need to be added, is the support for lossless audio. Now, I think there will be a trade-off if this happens because I think they will have to use something closer to Wi-Fi rather than Bluetooth in order to connect, in order to get the bandwidth to bring things over, uh, unless these files can be sent in some way compressed and then 
opened up in the earbuds, but that seems like a lot of processing to go on there. I think we're more likely to see, to see something along the lines of Wi-Fi, um, which will send a much uh much thicker signal if you like a lot more data at a time but i also think that's going to uh, impact battery life so you might get a couple of hours of uh, lossless audio or six hours of regular audio per earbud that would be my thought and that's probably where the trade-off will be now for the airpods max there is a lot more option to do that because you've got a lot more space you've got a lot more physical area i don't see why they couldn't put in bigger batteries would they then need to make the ear cups slightly lighter to offset that? Maybe. But I think that's more likely is that we could get uh, lossless with decent battery life coming to the AirPods Max. Random Nassar, IK answers. do you think the next Pro Display XDR with 7K resolution will have speakers and a camera built in better than the studio display? I just returned the studio display, the size was too small but I love the speakers, hopefully we'll get a 37 inch Pro XDR display too, I find 27 and 32 inches too small, and what price would we expect? I mean, I'm really hoping that the price comes down on the Pro Display XDR. I think if they were doing an in-person event to launch this, uh, I think they would come out and say, and it's still $5,000, or it's, it's still $4.99, and now we throw in the stand for free, or something along those lines, because I know that would get huge cheers, and yes, they're kind of poking fun at themselves, because that's what they need to do. In terms of the... Uh, in terms of the camera and speakers, uh, I think the speakers in the studio display are apparently fabulous. Uh, could you put better ones into a bigger display? Probably. Do you need to? Because anyone that's using a studio display uh, or a Pro Display XDR is probably going to have decent monitor speakers if they're actually editing video or editing audio, um, which is probably what these are being used for in the majority of uh, cases. I don't think you need to put in particularly incredible speakers. You don't want them to sound terrible, but you definitely want um, proper desk speakers or bookshelf speakers if that's what you're going to be doing, reference speakers. So yeah, I think we might see a price stay where it is. I think they might include a stand and then you'll have the option of upgrading to the uh, adjustable stand like we had uh, for $1,000 last time. $1,000 for the stand. It's unbelievable. But that's where I think they might go. That's uh, that's my thoughts. Randomness R asks, IK answers, what is your best guess for what year the iPhone will be truly portless and wireless and have the all screen design? That's what I'm waiting for. So the current roadmaps that we've seen for all screen design, i.e. we're losing the FaceTime camera behind the display, we're losing the Face ID behind the display and more, is probably 2026. And I'm still not confident that they will get to that point and be like, these pictures look good enough. I think there is a massive issue in terms of trying to take photographs through a display. Um, there is stuff in the way, it's going to reduce the amount of light that comes through and stuff like that. So there is always going to be problems now. I think the question is how good can Apple's ISP be, its image signal processing, in order to actually process and replace the parts that are missing in these images by then. If they're taking in enough light and enough pixels, they can probably guess what the other pixels would have been and do that on the fly. That might be the way that it goes. But 2026 is looking like the first time we will get a full screen iPhone without any notches or cuts into the display. And I think by then we'll almost certainly be fully wireless. Evan Rogers, IK answers, Intel seems to be having success in tossing an extra efficiency cores. How likely would it be for Apple to add six or eight efficiency cores in M2? I think we're pretty confident at this point that the M2 is gonna be uh, four efficiency and four performance cores along with a 10 core GPU. That seems to be what everything is pointing to right now. But that being said, when we were talking about the M1X, which became M1 Pro and M1 Max, we were expecting that to be a 12 core a processor with a 16 core GPU. We were expecting it to be basically four efficiency cores with eight performance cores. In the end, we got two efficiency cores and eight performance cores. So it seems that Apple is, is quite capable of doing things without too many of those efficiency cores. Now, I think the important thing to remember here is that when Intel is putting in efficiency cores, it's because their performance cores get so very, very hot and they're so power hungry that they need to do that. Whereas when Apple spins up all of its cores, uh, and I say spins up as if these things are, I don't know, spinning tops or hard drives, um, 
when Apple uses all of the cores that they have, they're still not consuming a great deal of power. We're talking 15 to 30 watts maximum on an M1, and uh, and that's with eight cores all fired up. So I don't think Apple needs to put in more efficiency cores. If anything, I think Apple would do better to go to two efficiency cores for those background tasks, for the fetching mail, for the UI being run, and then uh, six performance cores in an M2 or an M3. I just don't think that's what they're going to do this year. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you've got a question for a future video, drop it down in the comments section using hashtag IKVanswers, and we'll answer it there. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.